Hello and welcome to lesson two of week seven. In this lesson, we are going to look at meta classes. We are going to look at what magic methods are, and then we are going to use the concept of functions and classes and closures that we have discussed to look at decorators in Python. My name is Mildred. In the last lesson, we looked at how to create a class and how to create um, create functions or, or methods um, of a class. Python supports meta programming, and the concept is just allowing a program, or is just it's just like a phenomenon that allows a program to understand and modify itself like it's it has knowledge about itself and i will give you an example of that we have this for instance let's say we have an object of the class person called jane and jane is equal to person and then we supply all of the arguments jane do and then we have the sex is female we have the race is let's say black like this in this example i will going to print jane or let me print um type of Jane. So let's let's look at the type of Jane and also let's look at the type um, of the class person, the type of person. So we just want to understand the concept of meta programming. We're not going to be using it for anything. We just want to see that um, Python supports um, meta classes. And in this example, classes are objects, right? And as a result, the type of an instance of a class is the class. And then the type of the class itself is going to be of type type. Let's print this out to see so I can illustrate better. So now the type of an object of a class or an instance of a class is a class person. Now we are looking at the type of the class itself person is of type type. Now type is an instance of itself because if we want to look at the type of type for instance, let's say the type of type. So the type of type is going to be type by itself. So type is an instance of itself and uh, so by this we see that a meta class is a class that allows for other classes to be instantiated as objects of the meta class and this concept is um, supported in Python and we don't really need to modify or to create meta classes but it's something we need to have knowledge about to understand what meta classes are and um, how it is supported in Python okay so when you look at the type of uh, an object of a class everything in Python is an object and classes are objects also so when we look at the type of a class we'll see it's of type type and the type of the type type is type and the type of an object of a class is the class of that um, class okay and so type here is what we call the meta class all right so let's move on and let's also look at um, what we call magic method we see this init method we have here anything with a two underscore in front of it and behind it is a magic method and a magic method um, in python is used for different things um, most of the time we use them for operator overloading the two magic methods we've used here so far we use the init method and we use the string method and we know that the init method is is an initialization method what it means is initialization method and whenever we create an object of a class or instantiate a class this initialization method is invoked and you don't even need to call it once you instantiate the class this is invoked and so in anything you use in it it's automatically invoked so when we start building our software we are going to see where we have a file called init and init file initialization file which is run once that file is called the script um, in the init file is going to be run once that file is called. We also use the string method here and we use this to return a human readable um, string representation of an object. And so when we call the, when we say we want to print the object of a class, Jane, as we say print Jane, it now prints the string representation there that we have. So recall that in the last lesson we created a method called um, introduction and then we call the method but we now change it to use the string representation like this and then whenever we print the object we're going to get that string representation um, or the human readable um, representation of that object printed out like that. So when I do that, we'll see Jindo is a female, um, a black and speaks too. So whenever we want to have that string representation of an object that we can read, we do it like that. If we want to look at the list of magic methods in Python, um, just for us to know what the magic methods are and then research what the definitions are. Just use directory like this and then just put int here. And then when we say um, you want this to be printed, it's going to give you the list of all the magic methods. Let's put print and run. And so we have the list of all the different magic methods here that are listed for us to and be able to see what they are 
meanings are when they are invoked um, some of them are invoked automatically we don't even need to specify them and this is one thing you need to research we are not going to touch on them but we just know what magic methods are they have a double underscore in front and behind their definition so let's look at what decorators are we've seen this in a prerequisite course where we have said that decorators are a way to modify the behavior of functions or classes and we modify this behavior without changing the logic um, behind the definition of that function so when we want to specify a decorator we've seen something using a syntax with the decorator name now in python you can create your own decorators or you can have inbuilt decorator use um let's say for instance i'm creating a class and this class is going to hold like an option option list of items let's say um i want to import a module and uh, let's say let's import the enum and the unique module from the enum library so let me say from enum import enum and i want to also import unique like this so i have this in Imported, I want to create a class and this class let's say it is like a list of marital status so let's say it's marital status like this and I want it to be I'm putting the enum there to say single equal to one married to divorce three widowed four now if I save this and I run I'm not going to have anything printed no error but there's a decorator unique like this which is going to make us ensure that the values assigned to each of these um, lists is unique um i'll remove the unique first and i will make divorce three and widow three and run and i have no error but once i put the add unique decorator this holds a code that makes sure that these two will not go through because we are assigning the same value um to divorce and widow and when i run now we'll have an error here that will be raised to say duplicate values found in in marital status widow divorce now this is the use of a decorator where we modify the behavior of this function without changing the logic but we have another code of function that we use to get um, a functionality out of that function um, one way we can actually look at this again is to say let's create our own decorator and um, recall in last week's lesson we had looked at the concept of closure and nested functions and we building our own decorator uses that same concept let's say for instance I want to have every event that I that happens on the system while I run my function I want it logged for instance i want to create my own decorator and i want to call this my logger let's call this my logger as the decorator name and this will take a function here so we'll say func now i'm going to create now recall the nested function that we have i don't want to import login i just want to create my own message so let me say def message so we have the inner function now and i want this to take args and keyword args um I don't know in advance the number of arguments that will be supplied to that function. I don't know if there will be keyword arguments that will be supplied and what keyword arguments or what number. So I put it like that. Now I use the print statement to want to print a statement that the function and the name of the function. So it's going to get the func.name. Whatever function that is supplied here, the name of that function will be printed. So for instance, if I have a function called power, for instance, it's going to say function power called with you to list the arguments and then to list the keyword arguments if there are any okay there so i want to say print func dot name called with arguments so let's say i don't want to use keyword args for instance let's just say i'm going to have something that has um args only so i'll say the the first thing i want to print out if i run a function is print a text function function name called with the arguments that are called um has arguments is executing like this should print this first and then I want it to return something so let's say when it prints that I want it to return the args and then I now want it to return or to print another message again to say or let it not return yet let's say we want to have result is equal to and we're going to return the result later on we want to print something again and say that the function returned the result and then we're going to return results and here we're returning the function message so recall the concept of um, closures and inner function nested function that we looked at last week to recall why we create inner functions i'm trying to create a decorator here that i will use on a function and what i want it to do this de this decorator to do is just provide the logger that tells us when the function is executed when the function is done executing so let me create a new function I'll say this is def power like this and this will take the base and the exponents like this and I will say we want to, it to return base times exponent like this so I have this um, done 
if I print power 2, 3, 2 raised to the power of 3 is going to give us 8 printed out. But we'll just have 8 printed out to the page there, 8. But if I now use the decorator at my logger here, so what will happen now is that it's going to start printing out. The first thing it will do is it will print out the function, the name of the function I'm executing, and the arguments that I called it with is executing, and then it will now print the result out, which is this, and then it will now print out the function, return the result, or the function has finished printing, like that. So we can put um, return result, or we can say, and it's done executing. So I am going to save this, clear and run for you to see what the decorator does. So the decorator said function power. So this func.name just takes the name of the function. So function power called with the arguments at two and three has arguments is executing and then function power returned eight and is done executing. And so it did that and then print power. So every time we use this decorator my logger it prints this message so you can use this um concept of decorator to do something to log messages to send messages or to return messages when you do something to the user to print an output there are many inbuilt python decorators that we're going to look at when we look at the concepts of functional programming next week but this is just the basic use and understanding of decorators in python so if we look at the example that we look at using the unique decorator we know that that kind of example is a little bit confusing and when we start creating our software we might see the use case of that let's say we use the enum for instance again so from enum we want to import enum and unique and then we use the add unique decorator to make sure that all of the item here are unique and we're going to be using marital status you can use color like this and i want to put single one married to divorce um three widow four and then i want to say like let's create the function def in it and what this will do is we, we have the self as always the first parameter and then we have let's say marital status so we'll say self dot marital status equal to marital status like that and let's do dev string for instance like this and then this is going to just have the self parameter and then we'll say return self dot marital status we want to return the not the marital status dot name so we use dot name or dot or dot value so say self dot marital status dot name okay is a uh, let's print out the value like that so when we come here to say we have something like option one equal to marital status dot single and when we print option one then let's see what it prints out so we have int object has no attri attribute name so we'll say um self dot marital status dot name um, is what we want to return and we'll say option one dot so this is the problematic line it has no um name attributes there so string self self dot marital status dot name and then we print this option one let's say dot name and then run and then it prints out single so when we do this like this we have single printed because that's the name of option one is single that we um, assigned to it. If we want to see the value, we'll print option one dot value. It will tell us that single is assigned a value of one here like this. So I just came back to this example for you to see um, when we use um, enums like this and we create a class that just holds um, constant values of an enumerated list like this. Um, we will see the application of this when we start building our software and how we use things like this but in summary these are concepts we need to understand for us to be able to build our project in an object oriented way and in such a maintainable um, fashion so this is where we end this lesson in the next lesson we are going to go deeper by looking at functional programming and then we'll look at generators in python <music>